On the edge of the Rockies, the links of Glen Eagles invites golfers into a serenely beautiful course nestled right outside Calgary limits. Glen Eagles varying course elevations makes for some challenging golf. A portion of the course runs along a cliff 200 feet above the Bow River Valley. With the drastic elevation changes, the course comes with a variety of microclimates. Superintendent Myron McCulloch talks about what makes Glen Eagles unique and how they handle the weather that affects them day to day throughout the season. Uh, the best thing about Glen Eagles is really the scenery. Uh, a lot of people compare us to the Alberta flag. We're kind of nestled in the foothills and you get to see the mountains and then the prairie. So, uh, Cochrane, Alberta is a beautiful little spot. Well, this is one of the first. Uh, the builder was Les Ferber. Uh, building these holes on kind of the escarpments out here in the cliffs is pretty pretty intense, uh, but it's one of the first real tries at it, so it, it was a lot of fun being in here with construction. McCullough faces many challenges maintaining the course, whether it is microclimates or the changing of the seasons. The biggest thing probably here is we battle is wind desiccation being up on a south-facing slope for about 600 feet off the Bull River. Uh, often in the winter uh, you'll find they'll have to tank water a lot of our greens, uh, just because we don't get the snow cover most courses get in the Calgary area. Calgary is one of extreme climates here. We can be uh, basically plus 20 to 30 one day and then snow and minus 30 the next. So it's, you deal with a lot of weather extremes uh, on the hill here and uh, you deal with freeze thaw all the time. Winter is a big process here. Uh, a few years ago we were bent grass tea, so we have 160,000 square foot of bent grass greens. And I'm kind of into a lot of double, triple layers of tarps. Uh, I do use a wax. Uh, anti-desiccant that used to be, uh, I guess it used to be primarily for spruce trees. And now they have a turf label for it, so I will wax the greens as well, uh, just to keep any wind off them. Uh, we'll give them a super heavy top dress, uh, tarp over top of that, and, and hope for the best. He has found that certain grasses grow well in this climate, especially Pencross bent grass. The turf here, bent, uh, the greens are predominantly Pencross uh, bent grass. And then Kentucky bluegrass is most of our primary cuts, fairways, and tees. And then uh, we've got a variety of fescues we use in the montane areas. Uh, the Pencross performs very well. Uh, we try as a public track not to be too, too fast. Uh, our greens do have a lot of slope on them. Uh, we try to keep them between a nine, nine and a half uh, for most days. And uh, really with a, a walking height of 130 is what we cut at. Uh, it's pretty easy. We, when we get hot like today, uh, they'll be still 10, 10 and a half. At Glen Eagles, the Bow River is the main source for water. Uh, we have a pump house uh, down the Bow River, and we pump basically 400 feet up to our holding ponds here, and then our holding ponds here basically run the rest of the course. Uh, we have the capacity to run 2,400 gallons a minute on this site, and basically everything you see behind me, we are irrigated fence line to fence line. Basically, we've uh, I'm kind of on the verge of trying to really dry things out to the most part. Uh, water is important to us, so we don't waste water. Uh, basically, right now I'm watering greens probably once a week. Uh, fairways might get a 20 minute shot twice a week. So we're really trying to grow our, our roots deep as we can, uh, just so not to waste a lot of water on, with the windy and wet site and get the roots trained to be, to be a little deeper. McCulloch explains some of the practices that help keep Glen Eagle in top shape. Greens, uh, primarily I fruit them twice, twice a month. Uh, I kind of go into a granular program and a liquid program. Uh, I basically give them about half a pound of nitrogen. A month is about it. Uh, when I get in the fairways, I try to do about three pounds of nitrogen a year on fairways, so I'll try to do them uh, three times a year. We get uh, aeration. I try to do uh, a needle tine at least once a month. Uh, and coring, I kind of go every other year. Uh, we don't have a big thatch problem on the hill. So greens, uh, they get top dressed. You know, I like to say once a month, but often it'll work out to every six, six weeks, sometimes two months. Rolling is part of our program. I'll go away once a week. We'll get into that. Uh, today, before you guys came, we actually did a brush and a double cut, um, just because we aerated last week. So we're really just trying to get get them back to a smaller leaf blade again after all that. Um, but rolling is a, it's a fun way to do it. Come October, uh, basically we'll just roll every day and we'll bother cut and mark and shoot our greens heights up. McCulloch sees opportunity in making sure his staff is well trained and well informed. Yeah, it's, it's training. Uh, we've really gone a whole new regime of training staff, uh, safety-wise, you know, getting them to care uh, and be a big part of a team. Um, 
being three golf courses, again, it's, it's sharing equipment, you know, whether it's aerators, passing it back and forth. Uh, during the floods we've had this year, uh, I had crew down there for a week, uh, helping out our sister course, you know, which puts constraints here. But, uh, you know, you had to do it. So helping other courses out is, is always a big priority. And, um, yeah, budget to be the one working within those constraints. So.